two factoring problems. The first one is to factor x squared minus 100, and the second one is factor 9x to the sixth minus 25y squared. So take a few minutes uh, to work these problems out. You can pause the video, and when you're finished, come back here and we'll look at the answers together. Okay, this first problem, we've got two terms. Both terms are squares. So the first box is x, x to the second power, and the second box is a 10 to the second power. x to the second power and, and 10 to the second power equals this x squared minus 100. And once we have those boxes filled in, we know that each set of parentheses starts with x and ends with 10. One gets plus and one gets a minus. This second example, again, two terms that are squares. In the first box, we have 3x to the third, and the second box has 5y. Dropping those into parentheses, we have 3x to the third plus 5y, and 3x to the third minus 5y. We're looking at another binomial two terms, but this time the terms are not squares. This is an exponent of 3, and 8 is not a square, but it is a cube. It's 2 to the third power. We're going to try to take the same approach with this binomial that we're taking with the squares, except when we set up these boxes, we want, of course, to use exponent of 3 because we have cubes. So we're thinking, what do we need in the first box to the third power will equal x to the third, and so that's just regular x. And the 2 is in the second box because 2 to the third power equals 8. Once we have these boxes filled in, it, it's not such a smooth ending as with squares. You want to consult the pattern. We'll see exactly why we need to use this pattern, but you basically just have to use this pattern. And the way these boxes help us is we've set it up to say x to the third minus 2 to the third is our way of showing that x is what we're going to use to stand for A, and 2 is what's standing for B. So when we go to write our answer, we're focusing on these two sets of parentheses. There are two terms in the first set of parentheses, three terms in the second set of parentheses. Wherever we see an A, we're going to be using X. Wherever we see a B, we're going to be using 2. So the first set of parentheses is a minus b, and that's going to be x minus 2. The second set of parentheses starts with a squared, so that's going to be x squared. We have a plus, and then we have a b, a times b, so that's x times 2, and x times 2, we want to write that as 2x. And finally, we have plus 4. Our third term is b squared, and b is 2, so we're thinking of 2 squared, and 2 squared is 4. And that's how we're coming up with our answer. This is it in factored form. This is how we factor x cubed minus 8. So we still set up boxes, but we use exponents of 3, and once we have the boxes filled in, we want to consult the pattern for factoring cubes. When we are factoring cubes, we are using the patterns. And these answers seem maybe like they're a little bit too large for them to equal just this binomial x to the third minus 8. But this, the pattern tells us exactly the proper setup so that if we were to do a multiply, we would get back to x to the third minus 8. So let's just make sure that that's really happening. We are going to start with the x and multiply the x to each of these three terms. Then we'll take negative 2 and multiply that to each of these three terms. And we'll combine like terms and, and see what we have left. So x times x squared is x to the third. x times positive 2x is positive 2x squared. And x times positive 4, positive 4x. OK, moved right into negative 2 times x squared. And I'm writing it underneath here because I'm just lining up my like terms as I see them, just to make it easier for me to combine the like terms before I finish this problem. So that one is the negative 2 times x squared. The next is negative 2 times positive 2x is negative 4x. And negative 2 times positive 4 is negative 8. We'll combine our like terms vertically, 2x squared with negative 2x squared cancel, 
and positive 4x with negative 4x cancel. So we have left x to the third and negative 8. Those are the terms that we started with. So the cube's patterns we need to know because we use those patterns for factoring difference of cubes and sum of cubes and there really isn't another way to come up with this answer. But clearly this is the correct answer because multiplying will take us back to x to the third minus 8. And I promise you any other answer you might come up with, a multiplication is not going to get you back to x cubed minus 8. If you don't have these terms grouped this way, you won't have it factored properly.